It was all a dream. All right, E tips one rep TF, BBM, DOA, free agents, uh, UW, AP, AOS. That's pretty much about it, really, I think. Started writing graffiti in 95. Uh, started like really getting serious, I think, about it. Uh, 96, 97, 98 is when I really kind of came out of the shell. But 95, I would, I would say, is pretty accurate. So what got me into graffiti? Uh, I would say my story is probably very similar to a lot of other heads of my age group uh, traveling in the back of the whip with the parents, seeing on the highway, especially Route 10, uh, a bunch of pieces, a bunch of burners, characters. I, I remember this green devil from back then that always like struck a chord with me because usually the characters and everything kind of struck a chord with me when I was younger, more so than the pieces and the lettering because I didn't really understand any of that. So just the imagery of like the characters and stuff really struck a chord with me. And then obviously growing up, you know, kind of realizing how people actually do that and seeing people do it and then like really trying to be like, yo, I want to do this. Was I was just always into art as a kid. And then I think it was just like almost the rebellious nature of it or just the wonderment of like, how did they get that done there on the highway is what kind of attracted me to it. It was like half art element and half interest in like not knowing and like just the, the whole fantasy about it like how did they do it how do you actually do do those kinds of things like why would you do it up on the highway like that all those types of things that kind of like intrigued my mind and I think that's what really like planted the seed the influences coming up as to who really kind of like, you know, shocked my world, I believe. Uh, since I started in 95, it was mostly like the Spoke and Soda era, which is basically the DOA camp. And those dudes really, especially Spoke, just really blew my mind. Like that, that level of artwork that was done in that highly illegal spots and like as it was done just like very quickly but just so strategically and just like on point the line work just the way it was done that dude like really was like got me to be like yo i want to be as nice as spoke was art and then you know as i started to go down that hard road of trying to learn how to do it. There was a bunch of people that obviously influenced me as I seen it going down the tracks. So there was a lot of writers, but I would say Spoken Soda, that era right there like really slapped me around quite a bit to be like, yo, that I need to do this face, like those burners, like seeing that stuff, just wrath, even like, you know, a mitt, and the crickets like on the highway all that stuff just like really slapped me around so why do i do graffiti uh it's a very <laughs> hard question to answer uh at this point in the game uh i just do graffiti because i've done it for so long uh it's kind of a part of me and i just really when I don't do graffiti, I feel as though I'm missing something in my life where I have to do graffiti. I get, I still get that urge of like, oh wow, I haven't painted in a while because every single time I paint, I get that satisfaction afterwards and it's like a, a relief calming sensation after I finish painting something and almost like a celebratory, yay, I did this type shit. Um, but like, uh, as, as to figure out why I still do it, I don't know, it's, that's a deep conundrum right there. I, I, don't, I don't really know what the 
real reason is inside of why I just keep doing it. I guess it's there's still some elements to it that I feel like I still need to conquer in a way. And then there's always that consistent challenge of being able to take my name in so many different styles and directions that is always new and always fresh. That's very challenging for someone who's been painting for a long time to keep my name fresh and to do different styles all the time. That evolution of style is kind of something that keeps me motivated towards doing it. I, I think that's probably the answer, right? <laughs> yeah, tough one. How I feel about graffiti, I mean, I still get pretty hyped over graffiti. Like if I see something fresh or something stylistically done in a strategic illegal spot, I, I get pretty amped up, man, still. Like still kind of while out in my car and drive back around to check it out. Craziest story in graffiti. Uh, there's obviously a lot of stories over the years. I have uh, a horrible memory. <laughs> I got spray brain pretty bad. Um, I would say probably one of the stories that usually people enjoy hearing about my uh, career in graffiti is uh, a story I went to go. Uh, well, at the time, I got to you know set the stage here. It was when Perv was doing uh, a lot of uh, hollows on the highway, and he was writing King King of the Highway and this that and the other thing and. I remember when, you know, when I was heavy doing the bombing with uh, Sperm, the partner that ratted me out, it was just like a, a level of, you always have to do fill-ins, you always have to do colors. Like we all, we tried to set those standards for ourselves. So once Perf started doing all the highway, the highways and with the hollows, and then I seen Stat at school and he started revving me up about it and i was like yo i was like he's got to start doing the fills on the highway and i was like you know what i'm gonna go hit the highway tonight <laughs> I, got, I recruited this one of my homies who was uh in my dorm uh he was actually uh not my roommate but the, he lived next to us he was part of the football team uh, i was like i'm gonna go paint tonight he's like yo i want to come i'm like all right you can be my lookout That'd be great. I never really get a look out. I was like, yo, you can come. So I, I picked the spot over on Route 4. It was like in the highway breakdown lane. Uh, there was like one of those bridges that went over the tracks. So we parked down near like a Walmart, walked the tracks in. And I went up on, on the bridge and, you know, I started painting, started doing this like huge fill in. And I was like, Right at the end, I was uh, writing a, a quote that said, kings are for fairy tales. And I got to the triangle of the, of the A on the tails part. As soon as I hit the triangle of the A, Stady just popped right behind me like, and I was like, shit, this dude, <laughs> right when the Stady stopped, then this dude was like, yo, cops. It's like, dude, that was way too late. Like, this cat's already here. Yeah. So he bounced, and then I threw my paint over the bridge, and then I tried to go down, and I tried to hop over the Jersey barrier to go back down into the Amtrak so I could run down the tracks, go back to the whip. This dude was like a celebrity, dude. Like, this dude was like a sports superstar, like this cat was on me in two seconds behind me. And when I when I hurdled the Jersey barrier, it was just a straight drop into the tracks and it was just all woods. So I completely got hemmed up like ridiculous. I was like, there's no halfway down as I'm like running, tumbling to try to get down to the, uh, the, the tracks. I got caught up in this like construction fence, like this orange, you know, the, the flexible vinyl ones. Went right through that thing and I just got caught up and I was like, there's no way this dude's even near me. Literally, as soon as I, I got my footing to get up, this dude hammered me right in the back, like just tackled me 
like just speared me right in the back. Started hemming me up when I got hit on the ground because I was still kind of trying to get away. But once he started hemming me up, I was like, it's, it was over because the body blows he hit me with were strong, George. And I was like, nope, that's not, <laughs> I'm like, I ain't doing any of that. So he literally cuffed me right there and dragged me back up all of like the huge crazy hill and all like through the woods and everything threw me in the car and then when we went back to the barracks now i like lost a shoe i like ripped my shirt i was i was a bloody mess too because of all the 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 like sticks and everything so you know you know i'm, I'm doing the fingerprint and they're taking my uh you know mug shot and everything and i look at i finally like get a good look at him in the light and he's all bloody, like his whole face is bloody. And I was like, yo, this dude must be so pissed. <laughs> this dude just got screwed up by following me just because I saw I was painting the spot. I, I, I like, I'll never forget it because I, w I like, I guaranteed to myself, I was like, there's no possible way anyone's that stupid to just go after me after just hopping this Jersey barrier just for like, just for some graffiti. You know what I mean? I was like, no one cares that much. This dude was like hell bent on getting me, so I got I I got slapped on the wrist for that one, and then uh, had to pay a fine. But some years later, a continuation of the story was some years later. My actual roommate that I lived with at the time, Sugar Shane, he was in a certain circumstance where his car broke down. Stady actually picked him up, gave him a ride. In the conversation, or I don't know how the conversation went to it, but it was the same cop that that nabbed me. So he like he couldn't wait to call me up and was like, "Yo, the Stady that nabbed you, like how you gave me a ride, and you should have seen his face when we started talking about it." He was. The, he was like, I'll always remember that one. That was a tough one. <laughs> it was just not funny. So that's, that's one of those stories that I think uh, a lot of people like. And uh, I root for it. Like sometimes like when it rains, you can kind of still see the big fill-in that I did. I wrote, I wrote woman back then. I was like, after I got caught for E-tips and sperm rent meow, and then I started writing woman and it was, it was a big woman fill. And then, I, like, when I got to see Perm, I don't I don't even think I told Perm <laughs> that whole entire thing. I just kept that to myself. I was like, I think uh, someone asked me, they were like, why are you writing Kings of her Fairy Tales? I was like, yeah, that's like a good quote, no? <laughs> yeah, that was a good time.